Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be the third in this Bronson series that I've done. This is the Mustang 803, and uh, we are going to be taking it apart, servicing it. And I think it's basically the same reel that the Wasp is, only it's just a larger version of it. So we're going to start off by removing the cover. It goes, I believe this is clockwise. Yeah, clockwise to take the cover off. Then we're going to remove this drag knob. You got to hold the handle or else it'll rotate backwards. Okay. Remove the drag knob. We're going to remove this washer. And underneath that is going to be a drag washer. Like so. And I believe that, uh, yeah. This one, this washer here was on upside down. This these serrations right here are supposed to be making contact with this little clicker button right here, which is pretty much worn off, but that's what its purpose is. Okay, we could probably tweak that down just a little bit and make it grab better because it no longer is really performing its function. Uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. And you gotta be careful if you're gonna do something like this because if you do too much, you can bend it and break it. There you go. That's all. That's all I'm doing. That little bit. That's just enough to make it grab. Okay. Get that out of the way. Okay. We're going to take off the rotor. Underneath the rotor is a cap. And I believe, yeah, okay. There's a drag washer inside. Okay. So the drag washer sits under here but um i believe that's in the wrong location also i believe that that drag washer is supposed to be on top like so where that's going to ride on top of it. okay so this drag washer goes underneath over the top that one goes un under it and uh, and this is our this is the piece that allows you to have your uh, rotor lock in the upper position. Okay. All right, that's as far apart as that's going to come for the moment. Let's go ahead now and remove the um, screw for the handle. Set that off to the side. Set the handle off to the side. There's no other washer underneath here. All right, and at this point, there's no more screws for you to be able to take off. Okay, what you have to do at this point is push out this pin, just like we did on the Wasp. <clears throat> so we're going to push this pin out, like so. Grab a hold of it on the other side and pull it on out. Like so, and now the button comes out. With the button out, we can now remove the axle shaft. With the axle shaft out, we can now remove the main gear and anti-reverse. Now, this is just like in the Wasp, you have to look at how this goes. We've got a double hump here. The small hump goes to the top. The big hump goes to the bottom. Okay, if, when you take this out, you're going to see that there is... A point over on this side okay so this part right here on the back of it right here this back is gonna go straight up and down this angle right here okay this point right here is gonna go down in that corner over there all right <clears throat> so we got that then let's take that out let's take a look at our spring our spring appears to be just a bit sprung we're going to stretch it out just a little bit. Okay, like so. All right. We're going to take this off. And if you look, just like in the Wasp, that key is designed to fit right in there. So you can tell whether you got this thing wrong. Because if you flip it over, that doesn't fit into the teeth anymore. Okay? So, it goes this way. And there's only one way this will fit in inside 
this case and actually function. So we're going to get to that. So we'll get back to that. Now I'm going to go ahead. This is all apart. We're going to clean these parts real quick. Uh, clean this axle shaft. This one doesn't come apart the same way that the wash does. We're going to leave it together. You could, if you wanted to, take this E-clip off right here. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do it. We, that's not that much more complicated. I hope I don't lose the E-clip, though. Okay. I'm going to recommend that you don't take this off. But if you feel the need to, take it off like that. There's your E-clip. Okay. Leave that on the table. Take our spring. Set it over to the side. And now we can take our pinion gear off. And we can clean up our shaft. And we're going to come back in a few minutes with all these parts cleaned up. All the parts are clean now, and we're going to start working on putting this back together. We're going to start off by putting our pinion back on. Before we do that, let's since we've got the pinion off of the shaft, let's go ahead and put a little grease on the shaft. All right, I had just done this once, but I'm afraid it was out of the camera range, so let's go ahead and do it again. I put a little bit of grease on the axle shaft here. We're going to put the pinion onto the axle shaft. Then we're going to slide on this spring. Large end goes towards the pinion. The small end goes towards the end up here. And we're going to push it down. And then we're going to take this little E-clip. And we're going to snap it back into place right here. Like so. Okay. With that done, our axle shaft is ready for install. Now, before we can put the axle shaft in, we've got to rebuild this main gear. So we're going to take the main gear, set it down here like so. And we're going to set... First off, we're going to lubricate it just a little bit. We're going to put a little grease along the base of it here where this anti-reverse is going to ride, like so. And we're going to take this anti-reverse mechanism and set it down onto here like this. Then set your spring on top. Let's get this out of the way. Okay, now it's going to get a little bit complicated because now we have to reinstall this with everything lined up. Now, the, I think probably pliers for me is the best way to do this. I'm gonna slide that spring down and grab hold of these with the pliers, and I'm gonna take this and line it up, put it back in the hole, push it up in there, but now see, it's not lined up yet because we don't have that hump. We gotta get the small hump to the top, big hump to the bottom like that, okay? Once that's done, see how it works? Okay, so. We should have a little bit sticking out right here. Let's put the handle on, put our screw back in, snug the screw up, don't tighten it all the way yet. We might not need, might, okay. Now, there's your crank, it's in, and there's your anti-reverse. You'll know that you've got it in correctly if it works just like that. That done, we're ready to come back now with our axle shaft and oil the axle shaft. Slide it in to the main housing, like so. Get it to mesh with the main gear. And now we're gonna come back and put grease on the main gear. And if you put it on each of the teeth of the main gear and rotate it around, you're going to get grease onto the pinion. That pinion is gonna impact that main gear about four times for every one revolution of the main gear. Okay, there we go. Now, we're gonna put our button back on. Here's the button. Slide it in at the bottom first and then put the top in. Like so, there we go. We gotta line it up up there. And before we do that, let's go ahead and put just a dab of grease right on the end of the axle shaft where it's going to ride against the button. Okay. And let's slide the button in like so. All right, put that in, we can put our pin in. Gotta line up the hole in it. Now, before you push it all the way in, let's go ahead and put a little bit of grease on that shaft, or that pin, and push the pin in. 
Make sure it's lined up in the hole and push it the rest of the way in, like so. There, wipe off any excess grease and that button should now operate and it does. We are now gonna come back and set up all of this. If you look inside this piece right here, there is a little keyway. See the little keyway? Okay, this goes with this side down. And it goes in here and you're gonna slide it in and it's gonna meet up in here. Is there a keyway on this one? It doesn't have a keyway. Okay, so it's gonna to have to go on the flat side, like so. Gotta line it up with the key, there we go. The keyway's gonna go on the flat side of the shaft, and again, this is not gonna, it's gonna ride like that because it's spring-loaded. Okay, next is going, because I do not believe yeah, see, these two pieces are keyed together, so that drag washer makes no sense for it to be in here. But this, the, they had put the drag washer on the inside of this, and inside there, it's not doing any good whatsoever because this piece is also keyed to the shaft. So that drag washer could not have done any good whatsoever where it was. Okay, so we're going to put this on the top right here. Then we're going to set on the rotor. Then goes the next drag washer, like so. And this piece is going to go in with these serrations up in the keyway. Okay, you got to line up the keyway, but these serrations have got to go up. And then our drag will tighten down. You can hear it now. Before there was nothing there. Oh, hang on, let me scrub this up a little bit. Okay, before, when you tighten the drag down, you heard nothing. Now, you've got this little clicking sound as it tightens, and that little pin locks into each of the serrations. Okay, that's your drag. Okay, now let's see if we can get hold of the line here somewhere. And we can move on to testing the drag. go and before we do that let's go ahead and make sure that this is locking up and down there it goes locks up comes down locks up comes down good okay let's put the line through the cap after we wipe the cap out okay the line through the cap Pull it in, and then this opening here at the bottom goes to the bottom, like so. Yeah, it fits over, but uh, get it slid over and then lock it counterclockwise to lock it. See, clock. Okay, now let's see. Okay, the drag is very loose, so let's go ahead and adjust the drag down a little bit. Okay, it's still loose. It's still not a very good drag. Let's see what I can do to enhance that. might be too much grease or oil on these drag washers so let's clean them up a little bit okay okay this one seems to be dry 
this one is very oily so that's probably our problem you can't get very good drag if you're covered in oil okay let's clean that guy up I'll put this one back on here this back on here I'm not sure why that was covered in oil but it was I just cleaned all that. There we go. And seems like the drag washers are a little bit thin, as though we needed one more drag washer in there. Yeah, the drag washer is bottoming out, or the drag is bottoming out before it gets to the drag washer. That's telling me that one of these drag washers here are not thick enough to get the job done. Okay. Let's see what I got. I don't believe that this one is original. This drag washer is almost twice the thickness of that one. So let's put him in there and see what we get. Now, if you needed to, you could probably make one out of a piece of a milk carton or anything like that. Okay, put this one back on. Put our drag knob back on. I think we've got more drag now. Let's see what we got. Okay. Oh, yeah. We have much more drag now. We can loosen that drag up a little bit. Oh yeah, vast improvement on the drag washer. The, the drag washer somebody had put in there is uh, a bit thin. So I put a thicker drag washer in there so that the drag could actually impact and make some difference. And uh, there you have it. The Bronson Mustang 803. And um, if you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Tell me what it is you didn't like about it. Oh, let's go ahead and tighten this uh, handle back down the rest of the way. If I can find the screwdriver. Well, this one will work, but that's not the one I was using. There it is. I don't know why it's there, but there it is. Tighten this knob down the rest of the way. There we go. That takes away the play. And uh, it's awfully close to hitting the case here because it's got a slight bend to it. I'm going to um, bring it around just a little bit and bend it out just slightly. I'm going to put a rag on it to try to keep from damaging the paint any more than... It's already done. Okay. There we go. Didn't need much, just a few thousandths, and it's better. Okay. And um, let's see if I can clean up this button or knob.
Okay. That looks considerably better. For now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels signing out.